Hi, I'm Laura Spence. Welcome to Science Rocks. Science comes alive at one of the largest conferences for teachers. This is NSTA. The National Science Teachers Association holds three regional conferences all over the country. And this year, one of them is in Orlando. And one of the major emphasis is on STEM connections, preparing the workforce of tomorrow. There are tons of hands-on breakout sessions and some of the country's most recognized experts on science education. Like Mike Despezio, who challenges his audience to learn about the brain through puzzles, illusions, and hands-on activities. In Pinellas County, we have 155 after-school STEM academies. Why, in your opinion, it's so important to start STEM at an early age? Well, you need, to, you need to develop certain critical thinking skills and the skills about engineering, higher level skills of critical analysis, of creativity, and how do you do something? And really, it's so much richer of, of, of a child who comes to you with the younger grades and says, yeah, I want to learn it. And the magic is still there, and they're able to construct skills on which they build further and further on, upon as they go through the grades and go to higher levels of schooling. As you tour the world and, and you talk about brain-based learning, what can teachers do with STEM in their classrooms to inspire young learners? I think teachers really need to have kids do hands-on activities to see the practicality of STEM and really this inspires them to go further, not only in STEM and in math, science, technology and engineering, but in other areas as well. Um, so we listened to your presentation. You had us do several hands-on activities. What's the message that you want educators to walk out of your presentation with? Well, I really want them to become empowered by using some of the latest brain research and using that research to make themselves better teachers and sharing this. And educators, they're the most noble of all professions. And they pick up the stuff and they're able to use it because they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for their kids. Last thing, you talked about being an inventor and having inventiveness built into your curriculum. What can you talk about in, in, in terms of enhancing that for teachers? Well, teachers have to offer students an experience which really isn't passive acceptance of fact, but more it's active construction. So they're constructing what they're learning, and then once they construct the basics, we're moving up on a series of thinking skills that they're able to actually eventually create brand new things based upon the base which they've constructed. Another one of the featured presenters is Chris Fisher, the expedition leader of Sharkmen on the National Geographic Channel. His presentation, Transforming STEM Education with Sharks and Real World Science, shows how he has developed STEM curriculum as part of his OSEARCH Global Shark Tracker. In your line of work, why is it so important to have a great focus on STEM education? Well, really what we began to do and tried to do was create a sustainable path forward for the ocean by solving the life history puzzles of the ocean giants like great white sharks. We lacked the fundamental data to create their future, and there's no future for the ocean. There will be no fish if there's not lots of sharks. They're the balance keepers. And what we found was the more we open sourced that science experiment, the more kids followed along. So we began to open source the live dynamic tracking of our white sharks and our tiger sharks and the kids began to follow them free on phones and online. And while we had the attention of the students, we, we learned we could leverage that for a world class STEM curriculum. Mm. And while they followed their favorite sharks, they were learning math and physics and geography and geology and oceanography. So really what we came at this angle from was we have one of the most compelling ocean research projects in history going on right now, mm -hmm. solving the puzzle of these giant sharks around the world. It captivated the kids, and so we tried to leverage that to deliver them the skills they needed to get a good job in the future, which we believed was a STEM-based curriculum because everything is going that way. Right. And so we kind of... Um, a lot of the companies that fund us are going to have to hire people with great sets of STEM skills in the future. Companies like Caterpillar and Costa and Landry's and, and, and so they were all about integrating a STEM curriculum into kind of this charismatic shark research project in real time, um, mobile first, so that the whole world could be an explorer in real time, a scientist in real time, and then we could leverage that interest for, to make science cool again. Um, we have a lot of educators here at the NSTA conference. What's one thing that you want them to walk away with? 
Well, the biggest thing I want them to walk away with is that there's a free STEM open sourced curriculum of the next generation science standard available at osearch.org for them to leverage. Oh, great. They can just download the lesson plans. There's 20 lesson plans up there right now, and they're integrated into the tracking of the sharks, which makes it really relevant and in the now for the kids. And I want them to know it's there so that we can drive, you know, adoption because that's how you make impact. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is, is to help them understand that their science classes can be involved in one of the coolest ocean research projects ever and then leverage that cool factor to make STEM based science curriculums cool. Exhibit Hall is a great place for teachers to pick up all cool stuff to use in their classrooms. NSTA's Orlando Conference is officially open. Yes. Welcome. The ribbon cutting is a big deal at NSTA, and it's like a scene from Black Friday, as teachers rush to get free stuff for their classrooms. Like this mealworm larva. Wow, and what's that going to be? It's going to turn into a chrysalis in the little container that they give us as a necklace and then you transfer it to a bigger environment for it Hopefully not before the end of the day. No, five days. Five days. Five days. All right. Good. Pardon me, what are they called? These are called mud puppies from Minnesota. Right. They're mud puppies and their, their native name is ne Necturus. Pinellas County teachers are well represented at the conference. Elementary science specialist Julie Poth finds some of her science coaches who are using the conference to enhance their understanding of marine life and reptiles. You don't? Know what you have been doing today here at the NSTA conference? Well, let's see. Today we took an educational trip to SeaWorld and we got to go behind the scenes to all the rehab. Right? Like yeah, we saw the we saw dolphins and sea turtles that were back there. And that, manatees. And manatees that yeah. were being rehabilitated. And we actually got, um, there was like an impromptu, uh, they were doing x-rays on an anteater from Discovery Cove that yeah. was sick the night before and stopped eating, so they brought it over and we're, we got to watch the x-rays and see the x-rays up on the screen. It was pretty cool. It was like totally impromptu. We didn't... Um, it wasn't planned. Yeah, it wasn't planned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then we went to the fish... The fishery, fish house. the fish, oh, yeah, house. fish house, where they were and so them up all the, prepping, yeah, the, prepping the fish the for the different for all the animals in SeaWorld. It was it was neat. Yes. Yeah. So thinking about what you did this morning, how are you going to take that back into your role back in the district? That is a good question. Yeah. Well, we um, have uh, our life science unit that we just finished, <laughs> so we could probably incorporate quite a bit of that into to life science. As, yeah, for review. For, for review, for FCAT. Talk about food for, chains, and, ecosystems, yeah. habitats. Could bring that back as a review because we're just finishing up life science and moving yeah. into physical. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. We could do that. And especially since a lot of the um, animals that were there for rehabilitation were there for injuries caused by humans, like pollution and um, trash floating mm -hmm. and, boat and boat injuries, that could really go back to that fifth grade standard that talks about humans, humans and impact on the environment. environment. Perfect. Yeah. This has been a great opportunity for Pinellas County educators to learn about the latest STEM trends. When we come back, we'll see how nature and technology work together in Tampa Bay. But first, here's a quick tour of our STEM academies. Pinellas County Schools has created uh, the after school STEM academies to fill a need within our district. We've had a lot of business partners come to us and um, say that their demand for their careers is currently unfilled. So what we're doing is we're helping to fill that gap by providing Pinellas County students with critical 21st century skills. They were working on a recycling pro project and they were to determine uh, to make a new product. Not only we're going to make the product, but they're also learning how to market the product, come up with the slogans, come up with the product name. It's curved like an S, and then the rubber bands are just hooked on at the end. There is creativity to be found within those subjects. They apply what they know from science or mathematics in an innovative way. What is invention? What's more creative than an invention? Go. It's a 
fun opportunity to be able to do hands-on activities and meet friends. When we're in STEM Academy, the first thing we were talking about is cooperation and learning to work in groups. And I think the challenging thing that they're learning is they have to work together and that scientists and mathematicians work together inside of their field to come up with new experiments and new designs. What we're doing in, in school now can prepare them for to become a vet. Maybe even own your own lawn company, your own pool company. So I think it's something that has been interesting they can use in other classes is that collaboration piece. Their ability to elaborate, their ability to take what they're learning in this class and modify it or extend their thinking in other classes. So we're building with Legos and hopefully eventually um, some of them decide that they want to go into middle and high school building robots. We will learn how to build, build like cars and when we get older, we can maybe do that. When they come here to STEM, they have the opportunity to build those um, conversations and um, build that communication and relationship where they can feel comfortable to express their own opinion. But with the reading, they have to look at the directions all the time. Writing, as you can see, they have to journal. If you are interested in architecture, you're interested in learning to create those blueprints. In one group I had a smaller group of kids working with me, using the career chart and really trying to analyze what, you know, I love science, but what does that really mean? Trying to get them to delve a little bit deeper into all of the different careers that are out there. This is preparing me for my future because I need a career in science and math. One of them, of course, was on, on the computer for them to learn about making good choices. What they're going to have to buy in their lives. Are they getting the apartment? Are they getting the townhouse? And they actually sit down with a good old-fashioned board game and play together and talk together. This is more geared towards their choices for education and choices that they'll make with their, their work. It provides them opportunities to start something in elementary school then continue it into middle school and we're providing during the day STEM opportunities in our high schools. So it's just not a one-shot deal. What we're building with our hands, we're also putting that same kind of component in their brains that if it's breaking down, if it's not working the way it's supposed to, what can they do to fix it? I think they, it builds confidence, certainly. So I think the higher rigor of STEM I think prepares them for a greater success in the future. So they're taking what they learn during the after school academy and then pairing it with what they're learning during the school day. I decided to join the STEM Academy because um, I want to know about what different job opportunities there are for my future and what I have to do to get into those opportunities. I think the kids are learning the fun of learning.